It's a historic city known for its many palaces and forts, for its textiles and handicrafts, for its gems and its jewellery, and above all, for its characteristic colour that has earned it the title of the Pink City. This is Jaipur, the pride of Rajasthan and a world-class city in the making. Hello and welcome to our special series, The Cities of the Future, where we are looking at innovation and development that's driving our cities ahead. Today we take our journey to Jaipur, the capital of Rajasthan, which needs no introduction because it is one of the most popular destinations on the world tourism map. But as we visited Jaipur, we also realized that it is a city gearing up very fast for the future. Jaipur has been hailed as one of the first and most planned cities of the country. Having come into existence in 1727, the city's planning was inspired by ancient Indian ethos which centers around a balance of nature and elements. It was far ahead of its time with its grid-like laying of roads and streets all contained within the walls that secured the city. But over the years the population has increased, both within the walled city and also outside, posing a challenge to its present-day planners. Jaipur is being developed as a world-class city and we are preparing a vision document for world-class city, what facilities and amenities it should have and how it should look like. Uh, a part of uh, document also deals with congestion in uh, world city. Now decongestion plan includes uh, how the market should be uh, developed outside the world city to ease pressure uh, within the world city, then to look for parking arrangements, look for uh, uh, traffic arrangements uh, which can uh, make uh, uh, walk around the city more enjoyable, pedestrians uh, can have a uh, good walk, the tourist uh, can have a good walk. So we are looking at all those options. The wall city replete with its bustling markets and heritage structures is the commercial centre and a thriving tourist spot. On an average, it attracts about 27,000 cars and 64,000 two-wheelers every day, leading to traffic congestion due to limited availability of parking space. To ease this congestion, the Jaipur Development Authority has already embarked on a project that involves a two-level underground parking with a parking area of 16,000 square meter per flow at Ram Nivas Garden, an iconic garden located in the centre of the city. The Master Plan 2025 drafted by the Jaipur Development Authority has envisaged several other mega development projects in order to catapult the city into the big league. Amongst these is the state's first three-level flyover at the congested transport nagar that was thrown open to the public recently. Built at a project cost of Rs 71 crores, it consists of an elevated track a surface track and an underpass which is still being constructed. Besides these, there are many other major projects dedicated to managing traffic. One such ambitious project is the 150 crore rupee Ghatki Guni Tunnel Road project on the busy Jaipur Agra Highway. Ghatki Guni is a world heritage site that flanks this road and is in the danger of being damaged due to pollution. In a bid to save it and divert traffic, a twin tube tunnel is being constructed through the hills. Besides this, the JDA has several other projects that will give the city a complete facelift. 
the metro rail is another ambitious project that will put Jaipur on par with other mega cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Chennai and Kolkata. Work on the 9.25 km stretch of the first stage of phase 1 has already begun at a project cost of 1250 crore rupees. In addition, the bus rapid transit system or BRTS corridor was taken up to ensure that public transport facilities are available to its citizens. There are already 200 buses flying and another 400 will be added shortly. In fact, the city's BRTS became a benchmark for other cities by winning the JNNURM Urban Mobility Award in 2010. For introducing colour-coded low-floor and semi-low-floor buses, efficient route planning and affordable ticket pricing. Some of the other projects that are in the pipeline are a 144.75 km ring road project around Jaipur, a Jaipur International Centre, an international convention centre and golf course and the construction of an amusement park with snow theme. But that's not all. Swati Ramnathan, chairperson of the Indian Urban Space Foundation based in Bangalore that helped in the drafting of the Jaipur Master Plan 2025, explains how it is different from other master plans. We started the planning process at the district level, which was 11,800 square kilometres, rather than just that of the city, which was no more than 300 square kilometres. And that was so important because we suddenly realised that the Delhi-Mumbai freight corridor, which was being, is a national project which is being planned, we went after the railways department and we said, what are your plans? And we found out that right at the district level, there is a small little town called Fulera, which was going to, so this DLF corridor was going to go right through Fulera, which was in Jaipur district. We then had a full-fledged visioning exercise with all of the senior leadership of the state and we came to the conclusion we need to not only allow Jaipur to grow, but we also needed to provide key satellite uh, townships around Jaipur so that there would be a push and pull factor and that's where we would incentivize growth by making sure some of the state development budgets were allocated there, incentivizing businesses to come and set up shop, making sure that there was enough HR through educational institutes. So it was a very revolutionary sort of a look at saying we need to look at development as well as urbanization in a very planned manner. More on the growth and development of Jaipur on the other side of the break. Jaipur is a tourist delight. It is part of India's Golden Triangle which includes Delhi and Agra. The city offers abundant attractions in the form of a rich heritage of palaces and forts and a culture that leaves tourists spellbound. It's a shopper's paradise with its vast choice ranging from ethnic footwear bags, handicrafts, curios and interesting merchandise. The city boasts of a good road network. Broad roads such as this and free-flowing traffic movement are a testimony to this fact. It is home to some of the biggest chain of hotels, both luxury and heritage hotels like the Rambak Palace a former residence of the Maharaja of Jaipur and now considered amongst the world's best hotels. The recreational facilities that the city offers are by far the best anywhere in the country. A golf course, a polo club and a proposed archery, shooting and equestrian sports centre. It already has an international cricket stadium, the Savai Mansingh Stadium. Its landscape is dotted with towering mega malls. Most international brands have their presence here. All in all, it has the right ingredients to make it a destination of choice. With all the advantages of a metro city and without the disadvantages of a metro city. If we see the city today, it is uh, full of all kinds of amenities and it's a city which is well spread out. It's not as congested as are the other uh, cities of its size. It's uh, closer to national capital region and therefore uh, uh, the potential for growth and development is there. It's not very far off from uh, Delhi, Gurgaon and Manesar which are the industrial hubs uh, close to Delhi. And Rajasthan recently has uh, shown a lot of improvement in the industrial climate and there has been 
lot of development around Nimrana, Bhivari, and Jaipur is a place where uh, uh, ready-made garments, handicrafts, uh, uh, steel, other industries have grown up, and uh, therefore there is a lot of economic drivers present in the city, which is fueling its growth. Moreover, nearly 40% of the Delhi-Mumbai industrial corridor on either side of the dedicated freight corridor passes through Rajasthan. And Jaipur is in close proximity, making it ideal for investors to come in. The Bureau of Investment Promotion, the State Investment Promotion Agency, is the first point of contact for investors aiming to establish business in Rajasthan. Commissioner Purshottam Agarwal gives us a sense of the emerging trends in Jaipur's industrial growth. Rajasthan, and particularly Jaipur, as a tier 2, tier 3 city, is emerging a major IT destination and IT enabled industries in the country. It's a late starter, but now it has made a very solid footing. In a ACZ near Jaipur, all the major IT companies of the country are already present. A new ACZ is coming by another private sector company for IT uh, industries and three more such uh, areas are under plan, mostly by private companies. There is a large number of educational institutions in and around Jaipur, primarily engineering colleges and institutes. They teach IT software, computerized computers, so they are creating a backbone of uh, human resource which is a critical need for IT sector. With these two combined, and a proactive government policy, we have an IT policy which supports promotion of IT industries in the state. All this combined is creating and making Jaipur a major IT destination in the country. One of the other major emerging industries is the gems and jewellery industry. Jaipur has been traditionally known for its coloured gemstones a 250-year-old industry that was confined within the walled city. But now, with the development of two special economic zones and one export promotion industrial park by the Rajasthan State Industrial Development and Investment Corporation, Jaipur is quite literally turning into a gem of a city. Earlier, uh, it was a very, you know, household industry. We used to have gaddi, we call it, where uh, a mattress sort of thing is there with the white uh, sheets over it and we used to sit on the floor and now you see that the modern factories uh, the, in Sitapura we have got all state of art factories we are using the, the best of the machines which are available in the world in last couple of years it has grown because uh, when we were exporting just the color gemstone so our export was somewhere between 500 crores to 700 crores but uh, as the industry grew and it got more organized and we started making uh, the jewelry which gives more value addition. So it started growing and now as I said that it is 3500 crores. So in last decade we have grown from 800 crores to 3500 crores. The gems and jewellery industry already has a good export market but is also looking to tap the domestic market by actively promoting gems and studded jewellery through the jewellery show held twice a year. It is just a matter of educating uh, consumer that besides gold, just gold, just silver and diamonds, there are lots of other stones which are uh, real stones. Uh, which has beautiful colors and uh, once you know this happens uh, we are sitting on a huge consumer market here with so much going for jaipur various industry bodies are doing their part to ensure that the infrastructure around the development of the many industries that are present and are likely to come up is well planned we have a six lane road between delhi and jaipur government is now working on a new alignment and all two new highways coming up between Delhi and Jaipur. There is a good train connectivity between Jaipur and Delhi. A new double-decker AC train is also being provided in this budget, in the railway budget. It will be a fast train, non-stop between Delhi and Jaipur, which will be covering about... CIA is pursuing with the government for a bullet train between Delhi and Jaipur, so that the travel distance is covered in about two hours. If that happens, then the connectivity is going to get reflected in more number of tourists coming to Jaipur. Jaipur is also a very big destination for holding seminars, workshops by professionals.
We are also planning a new Greenfield Airport between Jaipur and Delhi. Uh, Delhi has a problem of uh, fog in the winter. So many flights don't get get to land there or get it diverted. We Jaipur or between Jaipur and Delhi, we have identified a location to develop an aerotropolis, which would include an airport with a operation, maintenance, and overalling facilities along with cargo and passenger traffic. So that project has already been prepared and sent to Government of India for approval. Jaipur is on the path to becoming a world-class city. But how does it do it in a sustainable manner? We find out after the break. Jaipur is being developed into a world-class city and the city planners are working towards meeting the needs and demands of its increasing population. The population of Jaipur district has seen a 26% growth in the last decade. With nearly 10% share of the state's population, Jaipur is Rajasthan's most populated and fastest growing district. And with the city expanding to peripheral areas, it's anybody's guess what pressure this puts on the available resources. Rajasthan is a desert state. Water, therefore, is a big concern, especially for its capital city, Jaipur. Presently, like, uh, we were largely dependent on groundwater and the way Jaipur city is expanding, our demand will be further expanding. So the crisis is that uh, uh, groundwater, tip, groundwater, which is the 50% source for Jaipur, uh, is depleting very fast. Uh, one to three meters every year it goes down. Dr. M. S. Rathod is the director of the Center for Environment and Development Studies and is working on a study that looks at the uncomfortable nexus between water, urbanization and climate change in Jaipur. The study attempts to create scenarios of the event of climate change and how it would impact the city's future water resources. Through its findings, it helps provide possible solutions to ensure drinking water security for the city for years to come. For Jaipur city, if you want to ensure that uh, water is available, then we should also look for the demand side management. And the demand side management means uh, uh, one, uh, regulating the uses of water. Uh, we can reduce the wastage of water in Jaipur cities in domestic use, commercial use and other things. The second augmentation can be which is the rainwater harvesting. Like in Chennai city it was done and we have a law now that any house uh, area having more than 200 square yards has to compulsorily harvest, make a rainwater harvesting system. So if that is implemented then that can be a solution. Power is another crucial resource that will be in greater demand due to both the population growth and the development of industries. While meeting the requirement for more power, Jaipur is ensuring that a good part of power consumption is met by renewable sources. Professor I.P. Jain, Emeritus Scientist at the Centre for Non-Conventional Energy Resources at the University of Rajasthan, stresses on the importance of the use of renewable resources to help meet future needs. He also lords the state's initiatives in that direction. Rajasthan has a, from right from beginning, it doesn't have much energy problem in the sense that it has a nuclear power also, thermal power also, and right now they have starting using renewable energy also, particularly solar energy and wind energy. We have many good farms of wind farms in Jaisalmer area or Badmer area. As far as Jaipur is concerned, because of the capital, it has not that serious problem compared to other, uh, other districts and other region of Rajasthan. Jaipur in this way is a bit lucky that it has a lot of power and it comes from quota and uh, thermal power also, quota atomic power also. But supplementing it with renewable energy will solve a lot of problem and in this direction, government of Rajasthan has installed many 5 kilowatt or 25 kilowatt power plant on solar energy base in Jaipur itself. The state of Rajasthan is bestowed with solar energy potential and its Solar Energy Policy 2010 is a positive step in integrating renewable energy as a significant part of Rajasthan's energy mix. 
One of the major objectives of this policy is to develop a global hub of solar power of 10,000 to 12,000 megawatt capacity in the next 10 to 12 years to meet energy requirements. In fact, in Jaipur, the government has already started encouraging the use of localized power plant for every building more than 300 square yard. Solar water heating is mandatory in all government buildings and hotels. Experts say that investments in renewable energy like this is crucial not only from environmental and sustainable angle, but also in terms of achieving grid parity, where generating energy through renewable sources will be no more expensive or cheaper than generating it from fossil energy. Most experts believe over the last five years, there are solar plants which will reach grid parity, which means that they are equivalent to a fossil plant by 2015. A lot of experts believe that almost all the renewable energies in some form or the other will reach grid parity in 2020. So there is a drive and there is constant innovation which says that we are moving towards this grid parity. The second flip side of this is when we talk about grid parity, we should also realize that oil dollar per barrel is also increasing. And there's a point of time when the cost reduction for a renewable energy plant and the cost increase for running a fossil plant are going to cross over. So let's say that's, that's where grid parity is going to really happen. It could be 2020, it could be 2015 in some places, it could be 2025 in other places. But we're looking at about 10 years where you could have renewable energy as expensive as fossil energy or as cheap as fossil energy, depending upon how we want to look at it. And that is the mantra for a sustainable future. We asked our experts what they think should be the vision for Jaipur if it needs to develop in a sustainable manner. My vision is that if in a large scale government start promoting people for using localized solar energy for water heating and electricity, plus to a certain extent using uh, high, low emission cars and automobile like Euro 1, Euro 2, Euro 3, Euro 4 or gas-based automobile, then it will going to solve a lot of problems to make Jaipur quite clean. Smaller growing cities have a chance like Jaipur, for example, where you can put the planning now in place to say that you declog traffic that you know, airports are planned further away, uh, expansions are planned, providing for green space. And Jaipur, for example, is close to the Tar, so you, you have a huge possibility to produce renewable energy out there in the desert and provide a part of their uh, power from green energy. Presently, the distribution system is such that there is almost 40% distribution losses which can be easily reduced to 10-15%, uh, which can be a huge augmentation to the supply. So this distribution losses has to be reduced. Uh, they say a lot of investment is required, but I think there is a time, this is the right time to make that investment and reduce that loss. Jaipur is clearly on the right track. It is not only a city steeped in the romance of the past, it is also a city gearing up for a fast-paced future. Thank you so much for joining us today. Goodbye.